Hello everyone, how's it going today? It's Tatsuki. This channel gives you a history and the culture of Japan. I think Japan's history can be divided into five eras. No leader, emperor,、uh, samurai, and emperor, governed by emperor, and democracy. One of the most interesting e r a is Second Emperor One, called Meiji, when Japan was born again to catch up with great powers of Europe and America. I previously introduced five heroes at the time and talked about how they changed Japan. I think you guys are interested in their own story, so I'm gonna share them. I've already made the video about Ryoma Sakamoto, so watch it if you haven't yet. Today, I'll feature Shoin Yoshida. I'm guessing He is not so famous compared to Ryoma Sakamoto, but he also played an important role in that time. There are links to the videos about overview of the history of Japan and Meiji era in a related video section. I recommend watching them in advance. So, okay, are you guys ready? Let's get started. Shoin was famous for genius. He was born in 1830 in Choshu. His family was financially unsustained, but he was be able to be well educated. His uncle taught Shoin strictly. If Shoin doesn't focus on studying, his uncle lashed out violently at him. So Shoin sometimes made complaints. That's no wonder he was still too young. But once Shoin understood uncle's intuitivism, he made an effort to live up to his expectations. And then the talent bloomed. Surprisingly, Shoin became a Kyoju Minarai when he was nine years old. If I have to translate it, it would be Professor Apprentice. Sorry, I'm not sure there's such a word in English, like assistant professor. Sorry, I'm not sure. Moreover, he became a professor when he was 19 years old. It was so amazing that the feudal lord at Choshu became his student. I'm still a student. Okay, anyway, he steadily grew to a man. Who was able to take a responsibility for Japan's future? But he was always gloomy,、uh, thinking about the gap between rich and poor in Japan. He was upset by his own uselessness. I don't think so, though.、Uh, one day, he learned in a national situation from a friend of his, and he thought he should have known about falling countries like Europe and America. So he decided to visit places where he was able to get the information about the countries. The trip was from Nagasaki to Aomori all over Japan except for Hokkaido in only three years. Of course, in the time there were no cards. He mainly knew about two things in the trip threat of the great powers and corruption in Japan. He learned how China was invaded by the great powers and he felt it was able to happen to Japan. In addition, when he visited a gold mine in Sado, he saw a lot of slaves there. So he resented the Japan's government and he thought Japan had to introduce advanced techniques from the great powers. After a while, Black Fleet came to Japan in 1853. I know it's usual in this channel. He got wind of it and headed towards the port where the fleet were. Surprisingly, he approached them riding a small boat and he asked the crews to take him to USA. He really wanted to learn advanced techniques of the great powers, but his request was turned down. And he was imprisoned because Japan's government strictly prohibited travel. In the prison, there were people who lost a way to live. I thought he would be like them. But he has never stopped studying even under such s i t u a t i o n One day, a prisoner asked Shoin a question, and he thought so kindly. Other prisoners also started to listen his lesson, and the prison gradually became a school, and Shoin realized the importance of teaching again. After a while, he got out of the Prison and started his private school. Normally, only people who have high social status was able to get education at that time, but Shoin hopes the world without unfair, so he opened the door of his school to everyone regardless of the status. This is the beginning of his second life as a teacher.、Uh, he taught many people from dawn to dusk. It literally means that he did lessons all the time because some students came to it in the midnight. So his time. For sleep was the interval of the lessons. His school produced some people who were active in Japan. One of them is Shinsaku Takasugi. I'm gonna make the video featuring him. The students contributed to a revolution for changing Japan later, but showing the school didn't last forever. In 1858, Japan was forced to sign an unequal treaty by USA. Shoin was strongly against it. 
the government judged that Shoyan attempted to defeat it and he was imprisoned again. And in 1859, he was eventually executed. So Shoyan didn't directly get involved in the revolution in Meiji. However, the student took over his will and his thought had spread it all over Japan. Many Japanese people were influenced by it, so it's not an exaggeration to say that his courageous action changed Japan. Okay, that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. Next time I'm gonna feature Takamori Saigo, he also contributed to the revolution around Meiji era and he is really popular in Japan. It's gonna be good, so look forward to it. Thank you guys for watching, see you next video, bye!